I know they're wrestling in the living room. So it's very, it's at least it's on par with the book, right? It would be a disservice if you didn't hear the goblins back. Like, this is like my credentials right here. Anyways, hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Liberation Podcast. Today we will be discussing, analyzing, and reviewing Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. Chris and I have adopted a Palestinian family that is currently still stuck in Gaza. Mohammed's neighborhood was bombed and killed 22 members of his family, leaving him responsible for his four younger siblings who have been pulled from the rubble. We have their family's GoFundMe linked in the description, and they're very close to their goal, so please donate below. Um, yeah, especially since it's almost the holiday season. Don't be donating to the fucking Salvation Army. Donate to a Palestinian family or somebody local. Yeah. Just putting that out there. Because I know this is coming up. It's Thanksgiving. Those little red buckets are going to be out. I know there's a No Santa charity, only of... mutual aid. Anyways, sorry. Uh, don't forget there's a link below to sign up for our free... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you hear them? <laughs> yeah, we, I heard them then. Uh, don't forget there's a link below to sign up for our free newsletter where you can get more information and updates about us and the podcast. For more content outside of the podcast, please check out our Instagram and TikTok at Literary Liberation and Twitter at Lit Lib Podcast. And then also we are on Blue Sky and Threads now. Yes. And I think everything is linked in our link tree. I don't remember all of the links. You but have they're all either like... You have not added the new... I don't think Blue Sky or Threads are on the link tree as of now. When this goes up, those will be updated. Okay. So just go there so I can... I don't remember what they are. They're like Lit Lib Pod or something. I think, somebody stole our username. I think Blue that really Sky <laughs> is Lit Lib Podcast. And then Threads is the same as Instagram, which is Literary Liberation. It's criminal is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm your co-host, Mariah, and you can find me at Hungry Ryan on all social media platforms. And I'm your co-host, Kristen. You can find me at KRXXTXN on all social media platforms as well. And welcome. This I have a feeling this might be one of our most popular reviews of the year, question mark, just because the movie is coming out. I think a lot of people are going to either read it, listen to it, and... Maybe you haven't heard a proper Marxist feminist analysis of this because there really isn't a whole lot about it. It's a fairly niche book mm -hmm. and the movie was independently or is being like, or was it? it like, it's like a Sundance type of movie. It's like not mainstream, An indie but it film. is. Indeed. That's, that's a better way to word it. I was using too many, too many descriptors. Um, so very popular, I um. think. Or at least it had a lot of potential, and they decided to make a movie with Amy Adams in it, which kind of crazy. Amy Adams loved the book so much, and she's like, this has to be on screen. Which, we will probably end up talking about our own theories of it, but I do think... I don't know how this book will work on screen. Objectively. It makes me very nervous and scared. And if we're going to be completely honest, uh, Chris and I did attempt to film this earlier this week and had some audio issues. So some of the stuff, hopefully we hit on everything, but I think it'll be a little bit more concise this time around because we had a very difficult time trying to like go through this. This is in our own like analysis and understanding of this book because it is a little nonsensical at time. It's all over the place. It's very character focused. So the fact that they're able to make like what an hour and 20 minute film of it, maybe even longer is kind of bonkers. Well, I just think too, well, because like at least like with the movies that I watch, I feel like they're typically plot based and not very character based, but with Night Bitch, it is very heavily character based, more than it is plot based, because you're more following like a mother going through like a couple months span of being a mother and just like motherhood is kind of like I don't want to say like mundane, but also like it's very normal. But then this mixes. Well, yeah, in you're like in a very like fixed location you're doing the same things on repeat like day in and day out but there is still like variety so it's like the fact that they were able to write a whole book about it right but it makes more sense because you can kind of get into the character's head but then they're going to try to depict it on the screen especially with the magical realism aspects of it because i think with the way that magical realism works is that the idea is that you don't really know if it's real like actually like fantastical things happening or if it's like something all in the character's head like for example bunny 
in some analysis as analysi of that. And so with this, I feel like because you end up following a mother who thinks she's turning into a dog at night, it's it's not I don't know if that'll come across like in the way that I was envisioning it, because I feel like it's going to end up being very literal rather than like metaphorical. I can definitely see that. I, w- I hope I have my hopes for it, but it also could fall very like flat. When I think of magical realism in like cinematography, I think of movies Black like Swan. Big Fish, for example, or Black Swan, where you're kind of like left in this loop of it could be real, it could be fake, but they do a really good job of executing it. And often I feel like these movies aren't necessarily like received as well as they could be. I think or Black they Swan kind of is really popular. Big yeah, Fish is Black weird, Swan does, but I don't know what. It, yeah, Big Fish is, I was is weird. Really it's a little bit that, more niche. Yeah. That you and McGregor? But you know what I mean? Like, it's it can be hard. It's going to be very yeah. specific. And I hope this is at least more than what Barbie gave us. Yes. That is my hopes. That at least it will open up conversation so people will be more receptive to wanting to read feminist literature. Even more, like, lit fic, just exploring, like, the fictional... I don't know, like... You, like, hope... lit fic, I feel like, is more approachable than nonfiction feminist lit. Um, what I was saying though, your outfit's that, giving very author core. I feel like I look I'm like it. like a mother. Not gonna lie, <laughs> like I feel like teacher core esque. But anyways, I'm hoping that the movie ends up being more of. I know you haven't seen it, but the substance sort of vibes because, like, I do think that that is also like at least like the body horror aspect of it, where I do feel like since I think this book will have to show a little bit more than like how you get it in the book because if not it's not an entertaining movie so i hope Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more body horror y kind of like how black swan is i was gonna say oh yeah black swan or like um i saw the tv glow which chris and i had very different interpretations and understanding but it could be one of those where it's kind of like um Either you really like it or you really dislike it. And all I know is at the end of the day, the men ain't going to get it. Yeah. So we have to be on the defense. Sorry. For this novel. No, you're good. But I thought we could get into the popularity of it. It did get 53,000 ratings on Goodreads, 11,000 reviews, 3.52 stars. So it rates like fairly good, I guess. Leans high, I guess. Because I feel like three is like middle yeah. of the road, so it leans more four star than it does less than. But I give it five yeah, stars. So just saying, I don't know if I said that. I did really enjoy this book. No, we haven't even talked about like our yeah. own like personal reviews. So Kristen rated it significantly higher. Told me I needed to read it. I read it, and I think just the overall structure of it because it is so character heavy, and also there's no chapters, there's no real breaks, and I was just kind of exhausted by reading it. A little confused. I gave it like a three star. I don't think like the over the resounding message is bad. I just think the execution of it could have been a little bit better. But I don't, I don't know. know. It's not terrible. I, I still think... recommend it to people. I was like, you should probably read Night Bitch because they would probably like it. Like it's one of those books I can tell that it, just because it wasn't for me doesn't mean it's like, like not an objectively bad book. But other people may enjoy it. I think this is honestly this is not something that I even am typically drawn to either i think the main reason why i ended up liking it more i mean full transparency i'm not an actual parent the only child i have is my cat so i don't really really like i am a nanny so like i do raise like raise children like in the idea that like it takes a village to raise children sort of thing and i'm just like another person to help the family that i work for take care of their children and do the right thing and stuff like that but i don't face any of like the woes of motherhood like if i'm sick i'm calling in sick that day i'm not still working whenever i'm sick i'm off i'm not being asked 24 7 about these kids like these kids coming to ask for me so i don't really have like the relation to motherhood like i have a mother and that's like my relationship to motherhood and so i think it's a really important read i think especially for people more my age like the gen z people because we're not having kids at the same rate as other 
generations were and are so i feel like this can be a good per a good thing for to read if you are not a parent or a mother it's kind of like a cautionary tale yeah this if you have baby fever read night bitch because then you won't yeah there's definitely a lot of people like to hype up there is a lot of good things but there's also a lot of things that people like to not talk about i don't know why it doesn't change the fact that children are great little creatures but there's a lot of real um things that happen to you and your mind your body like it's it affects everything every part of you so it's nice having something that isn't just like oh motherhood and being maternal is just the the, the best, greatest the thing great that can ever life. bless <laughs> your life it, because there's, you are more than that and i do think that this does a really good job at doing that is exemplifying that you're still a person outside of being of, a mother. Like, the domestic labor that you've been like thrust into. Um, what do uh, you want? There's not a whole lot. This is Rachel Yoder's like debut novel, so we yeah. don't have a whole lot to go off of her politics and whatnot. Again, not a whole lot. I went to Twitter or something, and she seemed okay. I think she ended up saying voting for Chapel Roan for president. So, I don't know, make of that as you will. But there isn't a whole lot to go off of. So, at the point of posting this, there is no controversy. So, this is, um, what, November 28th, this video is, or this podcast is going up. So, if anything has changed since then, we're not trying to hide it. It just yeah. hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it is. Like, she's not a very big author either. And, like, her social media presence is not very large or anything. So, again, it's just, like... It, it could be in the more niche side of the internet that we are not a part of. So uh, anytime that we're like, oh, like there's no controversies. It doesn't mean that there is no controversies. It's then that we could find of at a surface level research. We do this. We do this podcast every two weeks. We're not doing in-depth analysis on each author that we're reading. And we're, we're looking overall basic. If they're problematic, then we will talk about it that way not yeah unless they have like a a track history like somebody likes uh, per se jk rowling's are we ever going to review harry potter on the podcast no but at least there's stuff to go off of like there's been a track record that's been like a paper trail we know everything that there is to know for yeah. the most part at least that that she's putting out online but with these kind of like indie authors there's not a whole lot to go off of yet so yeah. in defense of what could come because anymore after like i don't know everything in the last year with like different zionist authors coming out like books aren't political authors using like yeah. a generative ai it, it stuff just happens so quick yeah but, i mean i think usually we're typically pretty good about the authors that we end up choosing because of like the side of book talk that we're on that we're not typically reviewing like the book talk book talk we're in like our more niche of book talk which is like the great thing about book talk is that there's so many different areas of it is that you can get exactly what you're looking for although i are. think next year we're gonna try to dabble carefully dabble in <laughs> some of the mainstream just because of some of the movies and stuff coming out popularity just to stay yeah. on top of things it's hard it's very hard to navigate it's, it's hard, hard to navigating want... any book talk sphere when you're so niche. Like, this is, like, very hyper-specific. Like. Well, the thing is, is that, like, we also want to read stuff we enjoy. Like, we don't want to just read shitty books all the time. You know? And, like, no offense to, like, the dark romance girlies, but, like, I do not enjoy reading those. And so I don't want to spend my entire like four days five days whatever it takes for me to finish a book and spend my life in that world when I'd rather be spending it in a novel that I actually enjoy and want to sink my teeth into too that's why I'm here yeah <laughs> sometimes I find Mariah some stuff that's just first. like you can't look past it and I'm like no I'm dragging you down with me but um, I think before we get into spoilers, we wanted to talk a little bit more about the movie, if there was anything else you want to say, although we did do a pretty solid job of covering some of our concerns. Yeah. So far. I mean, like, the thing is, is that, like, women, like, feminist movies are kind of, like, on the rise. 
this year we had like Barbie last year. The Substance is a big one. We have that movie, uh, Baby Girl, with Nicole Kidman, that's coming out at the end of this year. So it's like a very new rise of like feminism in like mainstream movies and stuff and it almost like it's like these movies kind of give like a book talk vibe so it almost feels like maybe that like with book talk growing in these last couple of years if this is like finally like these movies are being put out because of like they want more women to consume like their media Mm -hmm. I think with um how well Colleen Hoover's movie it went like us. it yeah it, I was gonna say like I haven't looked at all of the reviews and whatnot I know a ton of people like people in my real life they were looking forward to going to this they were like planning like midnight releases and stuff so there's definitely going to be more that that I can see for They've sure I remember announced in Hathaway <laughs> in the Verity movie too so I'm calling it Verity. i don't know where i'm adding extra i's and t's um so we might review that one because Next year. It's, i don't yeah topical i think it's a thriller i've read um, it already and there's so. also like the housemaid is going to end up becoming a movie which you've so, already done already review reviewed on the three of yeah. them so but yeah i do think uh, you can definitely see in the way that book talk even like shadow and bone getting like a netflix adaptation another book talk darling i i can see like obviously like media like visual media has always drawn from like books because we have like the harry potter is such a big thing the percy jackson show is now a big thing i think it's just interesting. outlander the books that they're choosing now is very different than what they were choosing five years ago too to, to. Yeah, because I remember um, specifically, like, because I was, I was like, a Twihard fan. So, like, when Twilight came out, when I was, like, 12 in the movies, like, that was crazy. And then as a young adult, like, Fifty Shades of Grey was absolutely nuts. But mm -hmm. I do also remember, like, feminist at my local theaters, like, protesting it. Oh. That's Isn't that crazy? So I And we don't really see that anymore. So, like, it's interesting to see how, like, the reception of, like, romance genre, and I do think it's going to be, like, more centered around, like, relationships, mm -hmm. less around, like, plot things, like, women doing things, but it's more going to be focused around, like, relationships like this. I don't know. We'll see. That's my theory. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Only time will tell. But I guess now we can officially get into the spoilers of Night Bitch where we're going to talk about as much of the plot that there is, which I don't mean it as a negative where there's, like, no plot. I just mean, like, they're not really... There isn't really a plot to, like, spoil. If that makes That is sense. true. Because even at the end, you're still left wondering. You don't quite know what ends up happening, and it's up for interpretation. So, if... I mean, if you're at this point, like a spoiler zone, like you've read it, I'm assuming, or maybe you haven't, and you just want to like stick around for like the vibes of it. There really isn't a whole lot happening. It's very centered around her, her internal dialogue, and yeah, the I main don't even characters think there's, like, are unnamed around her, her dialogue, right? Isn't it? No, just, there's like, a no quotation stream? marks. It's like a stream of it's like a stream of consciousness type yeah. of book. So if you like that. I don't, maybe that also could have been part of the problem is I'm not super huge on that. It's like very much like way. events, like you're very much following Night Bitch, the unnamed character that you get throughout this, the mother, that you're just following her day to day life from morning sun up to sundown of her doing motherhood things, taking care of her child while also like trying to understand her purpose within the world that is entirely patriarchal as well, I think. Yeah, I thought it was a very interesting, like, artistic decision to not give her a name. And the more I thought about it this last week, because um, we had, like, put off, like, refilming our video, I, I do think it was almost intentional because, like, mom mm -hmm. becomes the identity of every, like, mom Child, you lose yeah, your yeah. name. You lose your personality, like, you do the things, you, like, you're doing this reproductive labor, you're child-rearing, you're taking care of the household, like, those are, like, 
your task and kind of you take them on as your personality. So I thought it was interesting that she doesn't get a name anymore. Like she's been divorced of a regular name and she's been reduced to Night Bitch. Yeah. Which can kind of be indicative of like where she's at mentally and where she goes in the story. Yeah, because I think it's also, it's not even like whenever her husband originally calls her like Night Bitch or whatever, it's kind of meant as like an insult, but then I feel like by the end of it, like Night Bitch is reclaiming that identity. You know? Like, I think it's like very like, you know, like the whole idea that like me and you, like, we're proud to be like a bitch. Like, I'm proud to be an asshole sometimes, you know? And like mm-hmm. sharing my opinion and sharing what's happening like bluntly but it's also like not only because like we're autistic but it's also like i have pride (laughs) in myself you know like i i i know what i want i know what i'm about and i don't and i think it is very interesting like to choose like night bitch too which is like a very gendered term in a way too because it specifically references women usually typically because like as we know like a bitch meaning female dog is like oh you're calling me a dog sort of thing is like how it always was in like middle school but then also like reclaiming it in many ways i think night bitch does by the end yeah because a lot of what like misogyny is with the like policing and enforcing of patriarchal ideology like slurring is part of that so like trying to put somebody in their place and calling them a bitch is part of that and being able to like take away the sting or like the meaning of it like okay and yeah congratulations like it's supposed to do something and i think we're part of a different generation i know older generations like you don't swear around them you don't swear to each other but like i think the younger millennial and like the older gen z are kind of like this step away where these words don't really mean anything like at least they don't inflict that type of like bitch and like like, yeah. yeah But like traditional gonna, swear words, yeah. not proper slurs. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I get what you're saying. But I think <laughs> the the autistic um inclination to over explain. <laughs> um But I do think that like it's really interesting too to follow like I think one thing, like Mariah didn't really like like this. Like I remember like while she was reading it, because I finished it before her and I was like, you gotta read this. And like as she was reading it, she's like this sucks, blah, 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 like, I can't get into it, blah, 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 and I, I do still think that it's, like, because Mariah is night bitch, like, nobody on the internet will know what I mean, but Mariah is night bitch, like, I see night bitch as a character, and that's how I see Mariah, like, I think this is the most accurate portrayal of, like, if I were to say <laughs> you were in any book, it would be Night Bitch. And I don't mean that as an insult, because I love Night Bitch. No, I do think, had you had known me before, like, when I did go through, like, a massive, like, postpartum anxiety and, like, borderline psychosis, like, right after having my second child, like, I one-to-one? Well, because... 100%. I was there. I was locked in. I was just like, this is not good. I honestly think that was, like, the tipping point to, like my class consciousness because like something's fucking wrong and it was like either go crazy or like learn as much as i could you know what (laughs) mark saved me i'm just kidding but Uh like for real like when you don't have that kind of community and you're isolated in that way well because i think that's something too like with um night bitch's situation where her husband works five days a week out of town like i don't know i don't remember what he does this has been, again, I don't know if we mentioned it's been a couple months since we originally read Night Bitch, but he goes out of town for, like, the week, basically, and that's what his job is, where he's, like, staying at a hotel or whatever and, like, doing his job from, like, out of town. So then, between Monday and Friday, Night Bitch is being a mom 24-7, you know? Like, from, like, even whenever, like, the child is awake, like, obviously, like, you're still being a parent even if you're not there but it's like objectively like you're doing more because like you're you're the reason for like the child's safety and everything like that and I know you did you kind of had a similar experience during COVID with your partner having to go off to work to continue to make afford bills during COVID time 
Yeah, it was crazy. Like I was left alone for six weeks. I sound like I was. I was left, but it was it was an agreed was going to war move. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't know like what the future was going to hold financially. So this was like a way to give us some sort of like financial stability. And it was a lot of hard work on his end. Like he was working seven days a week, like twelve hours, fourteen hours a day. But he had to go all the way to Alabama and Louisiana and install those face shields. And like family dollars and whatnot. So I was at home. I took took the L. I stayed home. Yeah. So I had to do it all. And it's a very weird dynamic. Like when you're just doing that, it's very methodical. And I do think you kind of embrace like the Maslow's hierarchy where you're just trying to like keep everyone alive, do all those things, then you can move up. And it's like, okay, now I can do like a loving and endearing and being that. But you kind of, it's a job. Like you have to completely shift your brain so i see it in like night bitches like she kind of just stops at one point she's just like fuck it i ain't cleaning nothing up yeah. which is fair <laughs> sorry discord <laughs> agrees <laughs> discord agrees when you do a thumbs up apparently it bubbles and i forget that every single time um but yeah it's very weird it's weird reading about it in like a fictional setting when you've lived through that yeah which is why i find it so interesting that you like disliked night bitch like not like disliked it obviously because like you agree with like the overall message and stuff because like it does end up critiquing like our patriarchal society and like capitalism and stuff and i do have a quote that i know is relevant where it's like she inflated with she inflated with mother rage composed elaborate emotional arguments against the system and capitalism and the patriarchy and then religion and generals and biology so i feel like that's, like, almost, like, where, like, you have the the split where it's, like, you can educate yourself on these topics or you can go crazy. And so it's, like, Night Bitch went the other direction from you. And so it's almost, like, if you... Which, I think it's interesting the way she went, like, this homeopathic, natural, almost, like, crunchy route, which has been typically associated with, like, the beginnings of, like, the women's alt-right pipeline. Yes. Whereas I went the opposite way. She also, like, Night Bitch is somebody who is in a financially secure area. She has a beautiful home Yes. in the book. Like, she had, like, a career. So she obviously had some money set aside. And she's still able to do all of these things and, like, go do little community events at the library and stuff. Where it's, like, I didn't have access to those resources. So I think the, um, the class element there was probably, like, the biggest distinction where I just, like, could not relate in that way mm -hmm. to her i think that was what it was because i think see some of the things and like some of the stuff she said make it sense but then also the way the author kind of like i don't know it feels like falls into like a bioessentialist mindset of like women being grounded to nature like these are like the innately like motherly things i do take contentions with so it's not like it's cool. Like, it's good. It's good in that sense. This is a, why we're having a conversation about it. Like, we're able to do this, but it's not all the way there. Well, it's it makes no babble. But it's like. Yes, it's no babble. I don't think I have a proper, like, feminism version, like, of babble. Like, babble is just is babble. The closest thing for you is, like, uprising, I think. I did quite enjoy uprising. But even then, I don't know. Like, literary fiction wise, I have yet to find. Well, Milk Fed was good. I haven't read I don't know. it, so can't say anything about it. Um, I'm sorry. So, like, I just feel like liberal feminists are going to, like, leech on this, and then they're going to go down the radical feminist pipeline. But I feel like this could be, this is why I think, like, making this podcast is so important, because, like, you can read this, and, like, Night Bitch does critique capitalism, and I noticed that, like, at least, like, some liberal feminists, especially the ones that me and Mariah have been interacting with um, these past week or so on TikTok not gonna name any names but me and mariah have been having some internet beef with some people that are i would classify as radical feminists that could end up going down that path because it's like whenever they see capitalism they also like believe like the inherent like red scare propaganda about communism and things like that and so they're like classifying themselves as leftists without like fully comprehending like the terms of like 
how capitalism like relates to the patriarchy and how it continues to like empower it in that way where communism is actually more for like the liberation of women's rights and women and stuff like that and so i think it's like this could be the push where it's like it does leave more to be desired but i do think like with enough like education and reading of like left-wing theory you could end up being on the right side of history in my opinion you know and i think like yeah this could be the push that like if you really enjoyed this like maybe you should check out some like women race in class by angela davis which is like a nonfiction book talking about like liberal feminism throughout like american history and how like it negatively affects other women <laughs> yeah i do think this i think i am a big fan of like sylvia federici's uh, caliban and the witch and mainly because i know a lot of like white women get really like i we're the witches you didn't burn like no you're probably part of like the protestants that were doing the burning yeah. but it does talk about like the witch trials and everything that like went into that and why and how it helped to develop like the patriarchy that we see like the like in the united states specifically like how that has influenced the rest of the world i do think that like was it fearing the black body by sierra simone no no what oh my gosh i cannot remember what her name is that book though also like plays into like beauty types and whatnot i just think like books like this would be the better jumping off point because i do know that people are gonna go it's just the way that the political climate is right now people are heading in a very scary like second wave sex separationist like man versus woman dynamic and i do appreciate night bitch for reiterating several times that it's like patriarchy it's not men she makes it an effort to say that and i think that's very important to acknowledge because it's not man versus women it's yeah. oppressor versus oppressed it's the system right that's the disease yeah and these are the symptoms of it are misogynistic men typically and i don't think like i know like whenever i was reading this book i was just like waiting to like find out that like night bitch's husband was like cheating on her or something to like be a really shitty man but then like at the end he's just like a dude and it's like you know like i get it like you're just a dude that really like i know i have like these own things like within my relationship to like being with a man and stuff like that is that they really aren't aware of like the different things that like affect women around them because they are so mm, like privileged that they don't even like comprehend like the other things that are happening mm -hmm. around them unless you like clearly like spell it out and explain it to them and so I think that's kind of like how like night bitch's husband is and so it's like almost like because he's so apathetic which is how like these like how capitalism and how like the patriarchy thrives is just by people being apathetic towards them rather than fighting against it which is like why i think like me and mariah are so like no you must do the work to fight against it you can't just sit here and just be like well this is how it is yeah because you see night bitch's husband he like he gets it and he'll be like yeah you like you're you're doing all of this stuff whatever but also, like, he doesn't acknowledge that, like, all of the labor that she does is also, like, inherently benefiting him. Yes. Because everything she's doing is, like, helping his procreation as well and maintaining his home so mm. that he can live comfortably. Like, it's clean. It's preventing, like, the spread of diseases. Like, cleanliness is important in that aspect. And she's doing all of these things. And he's just, like, clueless. And it's so frustrating. Like, you can see the frustration mm -hmm. um, built her and like her snap towards him i think she told him to like put the baby to sleep or something and he's just like sleeping through it but it's like if you are somebody that's like benefiting from these and like you're almost self-aware of like oh, yeah i do like you should also be doing the work to educate yourself on it like if you're yes. benefiting from any system of oppression like you have to unlearn all of those things yes and you can't just unlearn it by like watching tiktoks or listening to the best podcasts in the world literary liberation you do have to sit down and pick up the other books that we recommend you read and read them and learn and self-reflect within yourself um because there's even like the scene where 
my bitch is like talking to her husband and like the direct quote is it's like because she's like she's complaining that like what she does for like her and her son is like a lot of work and like it kind of sucks and that she wishes like whenever he was home if he could like on the weekends he like bedtime is only like on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, like, those are his nights that he's always doing bedtime and bath time and stuff like that. And so she said, like, this direct quote is, Instead, when she tried to bring up the division of labor, the invisible labor of her life, the psychic load, he would offer something like, I suppose the money I make means nothing. And, of course, that wasn't what she was saying. saying, Not at all. Which is, like, Again, it's, like, I don't think, at least, like, most men, I don't think most men are inherently, like, misogynistic or, like, blah, I hate women, they don't do anything or anything like that. I think a lot of people do, like, appreciate what their mothers and stuff do, but they also don't realize, like, the amount of work it is because it's not something they've ever had to do or do. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, and it's a cycle that gets started and doesn't really get stopped because, I don't know like moms just like do all of these things and they aren't teaching their sons that and i also know there's like a whole generation of boys where they were raised by single moms yeah this is like a relevant thing for our generation i know for sure Mm -hmm. like everyone i've in like interacted with it was always just like the mom was there and Mm -hmm. dad was either absent physically or like they're emotionally like you know like emotionally like they're they're not having i don't know so it's like all place on the moms and it's like not necessarily the mom's fault but also if you're not trying to break these cycles you're also playing into the problem. So it's I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> um <laughs> but then you also have to deal with like night bitch like throughout the story and like she's dealing with like these extreme stresses and she talks about like how privileged she is to be like a middle class white woman. That is, like, who doesn't have to work and she should be, like, happy with the situation, but she still isn't. And so then because of this, like, her insecurities end up getting projected onto herself where she ends up, like, talking about, like, all of the other moms at a library are, like, so rich and fancy and they look so happy and stuff like that where she thinks her canine teeth are gaining sharpness and she feels, like, extra hair growing on her body that was not there before and that's whenever she really like starts to feel as if she's turning into a dog and again it's very ambiguous on whether or not she actually is turning into a dog or not because there are the scenes where she's like running around in the neighborhood where in reality you could like somebody could be looking out their window and just see a naked woman running with a pack of dogs or it could be night bitch actually it did turn into a dog and she's living her free life of being a dog where she doesn't have to do maternal labor anymore you know what's interesting though is like she's going through all of this whereas like all the other moms are falling into these pyramid scheme mlm traps yes. for their sort of like liberation because they're trying to have some sort of like like their own money that isn't connected to their partner so they're like getting into these like predatory businesses that like seek to like oh hey hun, you should join my team and you can sell like tummy wraps or vitamins or whatever like they're selling and this is like a very relevant thing in history like avon mary Kay. there's some really big ones i've been doing it for a super long time um but the whole thing about it is like i was i i was i signed up i was in an mlm and the way it functions like it's all through like referrals is the way you earn money so like you refer people they buy the kit they're out the money and then you get a leg up did I ever sell anything or refer anyone? No, because I was like looking at the prices. And I was like, this is fucking crazy. Like the amount of money that they're marking up all this bullshit product. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and you can like see that because she finally gets invited to like one of their things, goes to it. And in reality, it's just like the community is why the women are there. These moms have is why they're doing it. And I did also read um, like Cultish and Hey Hun. And Hey Hun is just about like an MLM, like a lady that was like a memoir following her. And a lot of it is, like, the friendships and... But they're also, like, surface-level friendships. Like, they do say Mm -hmm. they want to do all of these things, but then it's not genuine. Like, they're just trying to, like, make money. And you see this at the end of Night Bitch when, like, the main, like, mombi or whatever, like, they're called, the blonde one is like, I am in financial ruins. I have so much credit card debt and my husband has no idea. Yeah. 
And so then she like comes out to Night Bitch, and then Night Bitch is like, I know how to make money. And instead of joining her MLN, she gets to do what she kind of always loved at the end too, creating art and doing it. So like I think it's very nice for Night Bitch to kind of get like her story wrapped up in a bow where it is like obviously like the problems of like capitalism and the patriarchy are not solved because like they're not solved in real life but it is nice to see that like a woman get to experience like some type of liberation even if it will never be what it should be under capitalism or the patriarchy too yeah because most people like if you're working class or you're part of any other marginalized group being able to like be a full-time artist Mm -hmm. really isn't that likely for you like you have to be like a nepo baby to be able to like do these things have some sort of foot in the door so it like it's nice to see and i know for the people that do have it like it's incredible that you're able just to like make art for a living especially when capitalism is so anti-art and expression falling outside of the lines so it's so nice to be able to see that but also like it's frustrating because i see how many people in our society who do not have like the ability to go do these things they could be like master pianist or um painters and they just can't do it because they have to it's continue like, to sell their labor um, just to sustain their own existence that ballerina farm lady that everyone was talking about oh the on one that got the egg apron <laughs> yes for chris for her birthday or something when she really wanted like mm-hmm. i don't know apparently like for those of you that don't know on tiktok there's like this woman who is married and has children and i think she kind of does i don't know like not like vlogs homesteading yeah right like homesteading like a look in my life she was like going to juilliard i think yeah i think she went and was getting ready to go on on broadway and dance like in ballet she was really good and she got married and she's like keeps getting pregnant having these kids and then she's all she wanted to do was go to like Greece. Like they have money. Yeah. Like they're rich. She got her an egg apron for her birthday. And she's just like, oh, this is nice. It's like, oh, what the fuck? It's really sad, honestly, because like it's like almost like that's the path that I think like Night Bitch and like women that are see themselves like similar to Night Bitch and stuff, they will end up that down that path. But then it's nice to see that like Night Bitch doesn't end up on that path either, you know? Because, like, there's this quote that I really like, too, that's towards the end. So it says, how many generations of women have delayed their greatness only to have time extinguish it completely? How many women had run out of time while the men didn't know what to do with theirs? And what a mean trick to call such things holy or selfless. How evil to praise women for giving up each and every dream. Yes, because a lot of the time, like, I remember in my psychology classes that I take in college, is there's a huge um, conflation between like things that are good for your self-interest and then things that are selfish. And a lot of things that like, like mothers want to do are just good for like having hobbies, like doing things to like benefit like their own mind or go out and have some sort of friendship outside of the household. Like those are good for your, like your self-interest. You're not selfish for doing those things, but you're told by society that if you are doing those things, you're selfish. You should be at home. You could be spending quality time shaping these future humans. And it's just, it's a damn shame. It's a really good line though. I do remember that. Yeah. Very end. And I do, th- that's why I think, like, overall, like, even though, like, Night Bitch leaves you very confused about, like, the plot and, like, everything that happened within it, I think overall it has a good message. And I do think that, like, if you are interested in, like, this type of, like, literature, then you should be looking at, like, women's liberation under, like, socialism and things like that and about, like, why women have better sex under socialism by uh Kristen Godsey is like a really great like to talk about like the women that got to experience like more freedom under the USSR in East Germany because of the benefits that they got under this society and i think that's like something that we don't even get like to even like imagine in american culture to have yeah, like, it's free like childcare Right? It really does fall back into, like, Mark Fisher's capitalism realism, where he's like, it's easier to imagine, like, the end of the world than it is, like, 
imagine a communist society because it just seems so far-fetched and utopian we don't like to dwell in like utopian mindset but like having some sort of optimism for the future is like why we continue to do what we do to Mm -hmm. guide people because all it takes is class consciousness and a little bit of i don't know oomph oomph you need a little we need a little kick but unfortunately a lot of people are far too comfortable in the imperial core by design um to get moving so hopefully hopefully we'll see the the likes of it in our future i i grandma um maybe um but i really do think like if you like night bitch i do think that you should definitely check out like women's nonfiction. i know mariah has hundreds of thousands of recommendations on her uh book talk and stuff like that like personally because like mariah reads exclusively nonfiction on her book talk versus for literary liberation we're reading fiction and i think that's why i think like we started this podcast entirely is that you can read like fiction books like these and get like that base message and i feel like they should make you want to learn more about real life and stuff like yeah like that's one thing that i really appreciate about night bitch is that it puts me in an exhausted mother's shoes because like probably i won't be having like i'm not intentionally like wanting kids sort of thing so it's like also like good to experience that stuff especially while being younger to experience like things like this where you're like hey like if you are really wanting to have children you really need to think about it and i think that's something too that like men don't even comprehend because like it's very much something that like once they're once they finish their end of the deal they really don't have to be there like societally and like technically because, literally like yeah. they did their like genetic donation and that's about like, it that's yeah. all they literally had to do to procreate must be fucking nice yeah which i know and like that's the thing too where it's like people are like oh well like just put your kid up for adoption and stuff like that and like not even like understanding As if like, adoption isn't trauma for both parties like yeah god forbid we even consider that but i think i think this was good i'm glad that we did end up refilming this because the first time we were trying to like articulate our thoughts yeah it was very difficult because this book is kind of hard to discuss in a linear fashion because there's just so much to take on Mm -hmm. um but this i think was cohesive and i hope that we can review some more literary fiction in the future that like really stands out to us because sometimes it's a miss like my year of rest and relaxation it's kind of a miss yeah but like this there was some potential to it we actually could talk about it i mean Mm -hmm. we can yap about anything but this like there's just something special about it and i hope i'm curious what our thoughts are going to be after the movie and maybe we can do like a mini follow-up like yeah i think we're we're considering um bullying evan into doing his own episode and by bully i'm just like hey can we do an episode on this it's not actual (laughs) yeah bullying um so maybe left of the projector, we'll have an episode for Night Bitch that we can talk about for Intrude like 30 on. minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what we do best. Um, other than that, I don't really think that there's anything else. I guess, um, what will our next episode be, Mariah? Are we doing The Will of the Many? I think so. I, I would like to, if you think you can finish it. It's up to Mariah. I'm on the third chapter. So I'm on chapter 30. I think I'm entering the fourth. Yeah, Kristen's <laughs> so. plowing through it. So I am going to catch up. The chapters are getting a little bit shorter. The first couple ones were really long, so I'm glad it's a little bit uh, They are. Shorter. I don't think any of the chapters are ever, like, long, but... It was, like, I said 25 minutes, because I do mine in, like, minute metrics. So I was like, oh, Jesus, if this is how it's going to be the whole time, it's going to take for fucking ever to get I through. Do... But I think that's going to be the next, and then I don't yeah. know what's after that. We're kind of just it's a flock? sailing through. If you want, I don't know. Maybe we'll leave it up and see what we end up getting yeah. or deciding. I gotta look I at the schedule. But thanks yeah. for listening. Um, and if you're new here, we do this twice a month. Yes, usually. Sometimes it's three times a month, but usually it's only twice a month that we end up posting proper book reviews. Occasionally, we do mini reviews. Um, but yeah. I think that's it. Thanks for listening. Go see Night Bitch in theaters. Not sponsored, but we will be seeing it in theaters, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Mariah's going to be able to go, but I will. I'm not a big movie goer, but I do want to take my mother-in-law to go see this movie. Oh, really? You aren't going to make her read the book? No. I wish. Okay. Well, if that's all, thank you and good night. Bye.